So we are now recording. Midge, thank you again for joining us and for taking us through this week's Ethical Eats with Vegan Donuts. We're really looking forward to it and you can start whenever you're ready. Great. Thanks, Amelia. Thanks everyone for having me on Ethical Eats. Um, today I'll be making vegan donuts. Um, so I am imagining everyone's got the recipe in front of them. So I'll go according to that. Um, so first of all, we'll start off with doing the actual yeast mixture for the, for the donuts. So you just grab a small bowl um, water. So I usually do it in a kettle because it's just faster than running a tap and it's probably more um, yeah, efficient as well. Um, so I'm just heating up some water at the moment. And um, this is the yeast that I use, but any sort of yeast um, product that you get from Paul Safeway in your local grocery mm -hmm. store is great. So the water's just heating up. And so as for the recipe, so you put about um, a third of a cup of warm water and then into that you put about a tablespoon of yeast. So the water's nice and warm. Um, I'm approximating this in this extra because I've done it so often. So just with your finger, just test it to see that it's not too hot and not too cold. That's just about right. So into that, I'll put a tablespoon of yeast, sprinkle that on top, and then I've got some white sugar here. So I'll put half a teaspoon of white sugar um, what did you say half a, half a teaspoon. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so once you put the sugar in, so then just gently mix the mixture together and just stir it and then um, pop a small plate on top of the bowl and just set it aside. So we want the yeast to ferment. So whilst that's fermenting, then we can just get on with other components of the recipe. So that's happily fermenting there. So then the next thing I've sort of written um, is that in a large bowl, oh, actually prior to that, I said we can already prepare the plate where we're going to put white sugar and cinnamon. So that'll be the um, mixture that once we've fried the donuts, then we'll coat them with this sugar and cinnamon mixture. So let's do that. So just grab some white sugar and sprinkle it onto the plate. So we'll start off with just like approximately about a third of a cup. And then we've got the cinnamon powder and sprinkle that on top. How much sugar was it? Sorry, a third of a cup. Yeah, probably about a third. One, two, three mention that actually but yeah just to start off with and the thing is like as you coat the donuts if you feel like you know there's not enough in sure you need to add to it just make more but it's really really simple it's just the sugar and cinnamon powder so then just mix that and if you're a real cinnamon lover you can always add a lot more cinnamon or if you just prefer uh, more of a white sugar coating, then just put a tad uh, of cinnamon and more sugar. So that's done. So now we'll sort of prepare, uh, start to prepare the dough mixture. And then once the yeast is fermented, which shouldn't be too far away, we'll add that to the dough. So if you just grab a large bowl and um, we'll add the metallics, so I've written three tablespoons of metallics. So we'd like to melt this because we're going to rub that into the flour. So just pop it into the microwave for about 30 seconds. I actually forget though that some people may be doing the measurements um, as we're doing the recipe. I sort of pre-prepared things just to uh, make it easier, probably for me. I'm a golden old so it's just easier. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we're going to take it out. Everyone's all embarrassed now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I should have prepped it earlier. 
there as well. I'm managing to follow along. <laughs> if I'm going too fast, please let me know. That, so that's the neglect. I'll just show you. So it's nice and melted. I don't know if you can see it. I'm trying not to pour it out. Um, and I use um, a sieve. Everyone's got probably a different styles. One, you can do the um, sort of the clicking one. Um, this is the one I have. So you pour the metallics into the large bowl. And every last drop. And so then you get the um, plain flour. So the white plain flour. And um, um, so this will make approximately 10 to 12 donuts. So what you do is you get the plain flour and then sieve it into the bowl. Have a spoon and sieve the flour until it's all done. Okay, awesome. So once that's done. Then you can use your hands to just gently um, mix the metallics and the flour together and sort of making sure that all the flours sort of combine with the metallics because that will just give it a more buttery sort of taste to the donuts and just make it a lot softer as well. And yeah, I tend to use the metallics buttery because that just gives, yeah, a nicer sort of buttery taste to whatever you're cooking. Okay, so once that's done, you can see that the flour, the, it sort of resembles, it's clumping together, it's nicely mixed through. And so that's when you add your white sugar. So even though we're coating the donuts with a cinnamon and white sugar uh, coating, um, if you don't put sugar in the actual mixture, it will taste a little bland. So we just put a little bit of sugar. So I put, um, yeah, with three cups of plain flour, you put a cup, um, close to a cup of white sugar. Um, you can put in a little less if you don't want it too sweet. So that's cool too. All right, so you mix in, pour in the white sugar and then mix that through too. Okay, so that's done. So this is where you check on your yeast mixture and as you can see it's like really nicely fermented. It's like frothing at the top and you know that you've done the right thing. If it doesn't froth then just repeat the process again um, because it's all dependent on how warm or cold the mm -hmm. sugar was um, or you know if you add a bit of sugar to help the process. But just quickly do it again and leave these balls you're waiting for that to leave the net. Yes, so I find that um, that's something I stuff up all the time is trying to activate the yeast. I don't know what I do. Yeah. <laughs> I think maybe I, I don't do the water warm enough or I'm not sure. It, it's totally okay, Amelia. Like it's a hidden dish thing. Like mm. I've been doing a lot of cooking, a lot of baking. You know, you can tend to like sort of... Um, yeah, mess it up. Yeah. <laughs> you just want to do it, so it's all good. So, um, then you pour in the yeast mixture. And just again, gently sort of fold that through the plain flour. So, that's going to be nice to combine. And, okay, so now what I've said in the recipe is that you can also use a half cup of warm almond milk, soy milk or oat milk. So I have probably put too much yeast mixture for the amount of flour that I have here. But um, in order to sort of just put the, add the milk in, um, you just, yeah, you, uh, I probably messed this all up, but the thing is like, what you need to do is just warm the milk um, as you're stirring in the mixture and um, yeah, add it to the mixture, um, add a bit more plain flour and then you can just 
sort of increase the volume of the, the dough. So probably can do that now. Rav, can I have your help? Yeah. Yeah. So do you always do you always add in the milk, or is it only when you've used a bit too much yeast? Um, yeah, that's a good question, Amelia. The thing is, if if you um, if you again you can put it in the if you need to add extra moisture, definitely use milk. Yeah. But it's always also a good idea to add a bit of milk just to add a bit of softness and sort of, yeah. Um, yeah. That's sort of, okay. Just to make the yeah. dough fluffier and taste better. So even if it's like a couple of tablespoons, then that's all you need. Um, just depending on what you need. This mean, can you tap and sift through a bit of corn flour for me? If you don't have a microwave, is it okay to just add a bit of cold milk or is that going to ruin it? Um, yeah, because we're using like a yeasty dough mixture, mm. I think the best thing is to use warm um, liquids because then that's what's going to help the, dough, the yeast activate. Um, yeah. So yeah, just pop it on the stove then in a little pan. And yeah. That's probably better than using um, cold liquid. Can you see? Okay, if you can just help me sit a bit more for And then just, yeah, just that amount will go. So the amounts that we've used um, today are just a little bit less than what we've used in the recipe. So if you follow the amounts um, in the recipe, it should be okay. Yeah. <laughs> just a disclaimer. Okay, great. Thanks, Anne. Okay, yeah, so don't add all the milk, just a little bit at a time. And then we'll see how we go. Yeah. We're just adding a little bit of milk at a time. And then just mixing that through. Yeah, thank you. I think that'll be enough for this one. Because it's all correct. So basically, you're just adding some milk to get a certain consistency. Uh, yes, that's right. So like not too wet and not too dry. Mm -hmm. Probably just need another tablespoon. How are you going, Amelia? Good, good. I just used some warm water, some extra warm water instead of milk. Okay. Um, and, it, and it's worked fine. Like it's becoming like a nice, um, like a doughy texture, awesome. which is good. But I might just, yeah, next time when I'm, I'm not following on with you, I'll try it with milk and I can see the, the difference it makes. Good. Rav, I think there's a question there, but I can't see the whole question. Yeah, I'll get it up. Um, so what actually is in products butter? Because um, they don't have it, they don't think they have it in New Zealand. Oh, okay. Thank you. Well, that's me. Uh, yeah, any vegan butter that you can find in your store, that's cool too. That thing is just really good. So, Nutellix butter is just made from vegetable, vegetable oils, water, salt, um, emulsifiers, natural flavour, vitamins A and natural colour. So, it's not actually a nut butter um, in case anyone has any allergies to nuts. Um, um, I think you, I'm not quite sure what other vegan butters you can get, but I'm sure you can get soy-based ones. Any vegan butter would do. Mm -hmm. And there's like olive oil, um, yeah, olive oil-based butters and that which don't have dairy in them as well. So there's all you could, if you, if you don't mind, you can just use normal butter, right? I'm guessing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. There's a lot of margarines that you can use. Um, yeah. yeah. They are so like those. And would coconut oil also be okay to use? Just that um, olive, olive, olive Amy, um comes in a plastic tub. So would coconut oil be okay to use? Sure, totally. That's totally okay too. Because um, as you'll find that once, you know, you fry it and then coat it in the cinnamon and sugar mixture, um, it'll override the taste of any coconut. Um, and yeah, so it's totally cool. So once you've um, kneaded the dough together, now it's nice and soft, it's not too hard, it's not too soft. 
So that's what the dough mixture should look like and it should feel just nice and soft. So once you've done that, just put it back in the um, bowl and then cover it. Either with, it probably the best thing to do is to cover it with a lid, um, just a plate, um, or if your actual dish has a lid. Um, and so now what we need to do with this mixture, because it's got the yeast in it, we have to like sort of leave it aside. And this is where I usually leave it aside for a couple of hours, um, just so that the dough will rise. So um, yeah, if it's a sunny day, I usually often leave it on the windowsill and so the, the warmth of the sun will just help the dough rise. So now that that's done, you need to wash your hands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and this is actually where um, this recipe, you can't do it all in one shot. So this is pretty much where you'll leave your um, vegan donut making process until a couple of hours later. But what I've done is prepared some dough in the morning. So, so this is what the dough will look like once it's risen. Oh. And you can smell the yeast, and it smells amazing. Um, but that's the actual dough. Okay, so now you can get on to the more fun part of creating the shapes and frying them. So in the next process of the recipe, I have said to just, yeah, sprinkle a bit of flour onto the board and then remove the dough from the bowl. And it might be a bit sticky, it might be a bit wet. That's totally cool. That's what the yeast mixture will do. And you just coat it in the flour. And if you need more flour, just grab it, sprinkle it on top. To make it not really tough or anything, but just enough for you to be able to handle the dough. So when you roll it out and create shapes, it's not going to everywhere. Okay, so that's looking really good. Lovely. And there we go. So, because I usually um, try to, you know, do everything efficiently, I've written in the recipe to actually roll this out, make the shapes, and then heat the um, oil. But what I'll do is because you know, time constraints and everything, I'll start heating the oil now, then roll out the dough and cut the shapes out. We've got a wok here with some oil, and that's just vegetable oil. So we'll just heat that up. Okay, so just on medium heat, I will heat up the oil in the wok. And we'll just move things out of the way. And now I can come back to the dough mixture. So you're going to get to enjoy, enjoy two bashes of donuts then. <laughs> <laughs> Very lucky. <laughs> That's the good thing about doing these. This is something I prepared earlier because then you get so much more. <laughs> So true. I was actually saying that to Rev last night. I said, oh, Rev, sweetie, I'm going to patch, uh, prepare a batch of dough and then we're going to do another one. So, yeah, you'll be eating a lot of dough. <laughs> breakfast, probably. <laughs> mm. Okay, so now you roll out the dough and to about like two centimetres thickness in, in height. Okay, so you don't want it too thin, you don't want it too thick. Um, because then when you make the shapes, it should be, yeah, just nice enough so that when you pop it in the oil, it'll pop, um, pop up nicely, you know, just like a donut does. All right, so you can use any shapes that you like. Um, these are like scone cutters that we have. 
so we've got a round one and Arena love these flower ones. Mm -hmm. So you can use any shape at all, like your donuts can be any shape whatsoever. They don't necessarily have to be round. So once you've done that, then you put the cut, easy cutters or the scone cutters on top of the dough, press really nicely so it cuts through the dough. And then it's probably not a good cut, it's probably not a sharp, I think. Okay, let's try again. That's better. Okay, so then we've got some nice shapes happening, and it's you know also like not too thin, so it's a nice height. And then we'll just pop them on a plate. Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay. So if you like your donuts whole like that, you can just leave them. Or if you like it, you know, like the traditional style where there's a hole in the center. So um, either you can use like those apple corers. We're trying to find one that we used to have, but we couldn't find it anywhere. So you can either use like a, a really small um, lid or bottle. And I've used this from, um, these um, colours that I have that I made the icing with. So you can press that through the centre. Just make sure it's nice and clean and washed. Press that through the centre and then just gently pop out the hole. So then you've got the shape of the donut. Okay. Um, That's such a nice shape. Yeah. <laughs> it looks so cute. <laughs> like, oh. you use a knife to do your own sort of centre. But it doesn't like, yeah, come out so easily. So if you want a more professional look, yeah, mm. <laughs> do it evenly with that. So then you just keep continuing to cut with the cutters. And again, you see a hole. And then these are the donut holes, which you can either fry or just pop back into the dough mixture and um, continue with your donuts. Do you ever not put the hole in them and then, I don't know, stuff them with maybe Nutella or some other kind of chocolate or cream or anything like that? That's a really good point, Amelia, yes. So, yeah, you can definitely do that. Um, so, yeah, instead of putting the hole through it, let it puff up and fry. Um, and then once you remove it from the oil, you can, with the aid of a piping bag, um, yeah, put in your, the mixture and um, press it into the donut. Or alternatively, yeah, just make your own sort of hole and just pop in jam or Nutellex, mm. uh, Nutella, um, or anything that you like, yeah. Melt Yum. So yeah, that's totally cool too. And I can kind of smell that the oil is frying, so I'll just go and check on it. Um, the way to make sure that it's hot enough, I always just pop a little bit of dough. And if it starts to fry, that means it's ready. And I would think it is almost there. So we will just do this. I'll try another circle one. I think there's a small one we have, that oh. looks better, but that's cool. Yeah, we should have. And so that's more a circular shape. We've got one more too. We can just leave that one as is and see how that cuts up. We'll do a few more floral ones. So you just keep on repeating that process of cutting out shapes and then um, whatever the remaining dough is, just yeah, roll it up and then with your rolling pin, just roll them out, roll it out, and continue to cut shapes. Okay. So 
How are you going, Amelia? Good, good. I've let mine rise, so that's going to be good. I'm going to have some lunch, and then I'll and then I'll be able to enjoy them for dessert. I think tonight, so I might leave them till after dinner. I'm very excited to try them. I think, I, yeah, I think I, it'll give me a bit more time to prep maybe some codeine, so I can have a few different kinds, like maybe um a chocolate. Like yeah. I know I, I usually like to make a chocolate sauce with coconut oil and cacao oh, yeah. and um maple syrup so I might drizzle that on top yeah I'm excited <laughs> yeah like so I prepared some like strawberry icing mixture which you can yeah. put on your donuts you can do whatever you like once you start <laughs> frying them all right so now I'm going to start frying them and let's see how they turn out okay so how long do you have to fry them for Okay, so you're just gonna like sort of watch them, put it on a medium heat because you don't want it to sort of like burn on the outside and not cook on the inside. So yeah, it, you just gotta watch it. Um, as they start to bubble and cook, then just gently turn it over and then just keep doing that process until they're like sort of a, a nice brown color, but not too dark. So, how these ones are going. Probably take the camera over to oh, just have a look. That's good. And I can probably pop in and Oh, they look like they're puffing up nicely. Actually, that's a really good idea. So we I'll just get this one. That was the test. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, try not to tamper with it until it's like cooked a bit, cooked a little bit so that you're not just messing with the shape of it. Okay, so it's bubbling away. <laughs> and yeah, you can see the heat's like kind of on medium, not too high. So it'll just cook from the inside out. Mm. And we might just fry these for four and then we can show how we do the toppings. Um, and then we can fry the rest later. <laughs> so yeah, on average, yeah, that's a good question about how long it takes to fry um, each batch. It's, yeah, probably about five minutes. Um, yeah, and how long would you recommend eating these, I guess, in the same day that you make them? Like, do they last, do they last a few days or are they best, best on the first day? Yeah, um, it's best to eat it on the first day, really. Like, Rena and I have made this a couple of times. And, yeah, it's a really good question because, like, we find that the taste differs as the days mm. go on. It's best on the first day. Um, and then the next day you can sort of, like, heat it under the grill. Um, micro is probably not a good idea. Yeah. Rav likes to eat it cold. But mm. as it loses its freshness, then it's best to, um, yeah, microwave it a bit. And I yeah. think let that a little too much, but I think I ignored that one a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a little too brown. These ones are a little better. And I think also if you had um, donuts with filling, they will be, they'll have a different taste compared to the donuts without filling on the different mm. days. So I reckon yeah. the donuts with the filling on the second day would taste, would still taste good. Yeah, um, that's very true. And they're best fresh as well. So if you've got a party to cater for when lockdown is all over, <laughs> then it's, um, they're probably best, yes, yeah, as, as fresh as they can be. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a few people in the, um, where I'm staying at the moment. There's a few people in the house, so I feel like they'll be gone very quickly, these donuts, <laughs> which is good. I've been enjoyed fresh. They're great okay. gift ideas as well. So if you've um, got a friend's birthday, um, I think you can send them through Uber now <laughs> and get them delivered to your friend. <laughs> They're homemade. So as you can see, like, they are puffing up a bit. Um, the yeast mixture is um, just making that happen. 
So they're looking really yummy. A bit more cooking. I should have put a plate here so that I can just rest this next to it rather than interfering with that. <laughs> it's really nice because we can start the smell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and mind, yeah, just be mindful that they're not going to taste like the shop, the ones that you buy in the shop. They're like homemade donuts, but you know, they're going to taste their own there. Um, yeah, just as yummy, especially when you coat them with cinnamon and sugar and <laughs> add all your toppings and everything. So yeah, now it's browning and it's cooking time. It's cooking so fast. fast really. <laughs> okay. Um, So do you put it, um, do you put the donut straight from the frying pan or the wok to the cinnamon sugar? Yeah. So I probably wouldn't, um, like as you, when you take them out, they're going to still be dripping with oil. So you just um, put them to the side, let them drain a bit. Mm -hmm. I would put it on another plate because then that's going to be soaked in oil where okay. the cinnamon sugar is. So put it on another plate, then put it straight onto the cinnamon and sugar mixture. And it's nearly there. So they don't take that long to fry, which is nice. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to get another plate. When we went fry, So at the moment, my mum's just getting another plate ready and I think she's going to put a few tissues down or paper towels. Is that what you normally do to um, wipe off the oil? I do that for us because oh. you know, it's like, you know, I'm just worried about, you know, yeah. having a lot of oil. But if you want to do it like so it has maximum mm. taste, taste, yeah, then you don't. Okay. So as you can see, like this donut is like nicely browned on both sides. So that's ready to come out. So I just hold it to the edge. And let the donut drain. Okay. Onto the plate. <laughs> the glue as well. It's okay. <laughs> and then we can do the coating over there. Yeah. And I'm going to just see it going a little bit more. It's almost ready. I'll just take this. Okay, so you can see that the donuts are nicely browned. That one's a tad over browned, neglected that one for a bit, but that's the colour that you like to aim to get. So it's definitely cooked on both sides and on the inside. So um, when they're fresh out of the oil onto the plate, um, then pop them onto the cinnamon and sugar mixture and nicely coat it. I like to dab the sugar basically onto the donut so that it gets maximum sugar coverage. Yeah. <laughs> And alternatively, instead of doing it on a plate, you can put it into the mixture into a bowl. Um, so that may just help coat it a little better. So we will just do that now. Okay. So get the other donut and sprinkle it all over the top. Is the icing as well? Yeah. So nicely coat it. And there's another one done. Um, so they're the cinnamon sugar ones. So alternatively, as Amelia said, you can put any sort of topping that you like, whether it's chocolate, strawberry. So I've just got some strawberry icing. Um, so if you were to do this though, you need to wait for the donuts to cool down. Otherwise they're just gonna run everywhere. But we'll just give it a shot. So 
So that's just basically a demon with no um, just icing sugar, water, and just a bit of food coloring. So yeah, it is looking a bit, but that's okay. And then we've also got the sprinkles that you can fill in that. So that's one. And yeah, so these are vegan sprinkles. You just all, yeah, some of the products, you know, um, have animal sort of, uh, what is it, gelatin in it? But some are just made from sugar and water. So just find the ones that doesn't have any animal products. And then sprinkle. And I think we just got those sprinkles from Collins. Yeah. And they're going all over the place. So you've got to do it pretty quickly so yeah, that before the um I see it. But everyone gets the picture of how to do it. Yeah. Oh, they look great. <laughs> <laughs> that looks delicious. Yeah, so then you just continue the process with the rest of the donuts and it's all good. So just pop them on the plate. And there you go. Here's your homemade vegan donuts. Amazing. A cup of warm milk. Um, yeah. Easier. They look so good, Midge. Thank you. Rav, you're going to have to let us know how they are when you try one. I will. Do oh, you want to try one now? Too? Sure. Are they hot? Yeah, try one on camera and yeah. talk us through it. Talk us through it. <laughs> and even like sort of break that open so that it's hard for the image. We could just break straight into it. I'll break it straight into it. <laughs> I wonder if everyone, anyone listening in is going to try these later today because I'm definitely excited to We're very young, so try them. Inside. So it's kind of like got that puffy, yeasty sort of dough. Um, it's all cooked yeah. and yeah, nice and crunchy on the outside. Definitely tastes like a donut. Thank you. That's, That's delicious. Awesome. You're welcome. <laughs> Um, so Perfect. Thank you so much, Midge and Ravina. They look amazing. I'm very excited to try them. Thanks so much for coming back for this week's Acts of Connection. Just um, as a reminder to everyone, this is run as part of Green Impact. So uh, make sure you're logging this as an action. It can either be maybe a wild card or maybe you've got some kind of cooking or other um, engagement action in there. So definitely make sure you try and log this in the toolkit. And I think we might hopefully be having you back in the future for another Ethical Eats Midge. Sure. That'd be really great. And yeah, just thank you so much for, thank you so much for sharing that recipe with us. And if you do um, give this recipe a try, please take photos and send them to us as well. So we'd love to share it with Midge. Thanks, Thanks so, so much, much Julia, for having me on again. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Okay, have a lovely afternoon, everyone. We'll see you next time. We'll see you next week. I think our next, um, Acts of Connection is make a wish for the earth. So you can write a little wish for the earth on a piece of paper and take a picture for it. And then we have a few other things like um, our plant propagation one coming up in a few weeks as well. So we will send out all the, all the communications for that as well. Okay. All right. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.